It's so interesting that like, you know, we go through this progression in life where we go from being a kid and the relationship, the first relationship that we see is the relationship between our parents and actually our, I guess, our relationship with our parents as well. And that does form a lot of what we see as what a relationship should be, whether that be healthy or not so healthy. And then as you get older, you know, you start actually dating for yourself and meeting people, you realize that they have this completely different idea of what a relationship should look like. And then you've got two people that are coming together from completely different worlds. (laughs) And most of the time, I would say, especially as we first begin dating it's an absolute nightmare because we don't know ourselves we actually don't know what a healthy relationship is and then along the way we get hurt and then we can hold grudges and then we can bring that baggage into new relationships and unfortunately for a lot of us unless we stop and reflect and take accountability for our own behavior and figure out what a healthy relationship actually is and what we need to look for but also what we need to change you just end up in this really horrible cycle and really not getting well not a 10 out of 10 relationship that's for sure do you see a lot of that and does a lot of the a lot of the situations and um, I guess like issues that people have in relationships, do you see it stemming from those early years? Yeah, definitely. One of the first things I focus on with everybody is I make them a 10 out of 10 within who they are first. So a lot of people get stuck in this recurring type negative pattern. A lot of girls come to me and they're what I call nice guys. They're just too nice. They date down. They're not really nice, but they appear as nice guys. So they date a lot of losers. Oh, he's okay. He's unemployed at the moment, but... You know, you know, he'll get a job one day. Just they're too nice. Then other girls, they hold on to negative trauma type states for long periods of time and feel like they're really broken and hurt and injured and they act like wounded animals. They're not really, but they hold on to it really strongly. What I do is I got to make them a 10 out of 10 first. So we spend a lot of time on confidence, self-esteem, self-worth. Spend a lot of time getting rid of overthinking, self-sabotaging fears and insecurities. When we do that, then they can actually get someone decent in a high value guy who also has a good mindset and if we start with that mindset everything else just falls into place pretty easy I love that because you attract the energy that you put out there and you also attract the level of partner that you're at as well and sometimes we're not even really aware of that energy that we're putting out I was having a discussion with a friend of mine talking about another girl who's kind of like an acquaintance of us and she seems to get into these relationships with these guys that are just absolute drop kicks have like nothing going for them and she is such a gorgeous girl like inside and out and we're like why on earth does she attract these guys and we were out one night and I noticed that when I was with her she would it was almost like guys that were just bad news were attracted to her and would approach her and they weren't approaching any of us and I thought isn't that interesting it really goes to show that without us actually being sometimes aware of our energy we put off what we want to attract without even kind of knowing it and I guess you only become aware of that once you're aware of your shortcomings and what you really need to work on and getting to a place where you're you become at peace with yourself and you know who you are the best way to fix this is to remember my saying it doesn't matter what you attract it only matters what you allow Mm -hmm. if you remember that sentence if a girl tells herself that sentence it doesn't matter what I attract it only matters what I allow then simply by doing that what she attract changes because it puts you out a different energy to go doesn't matter what I attract I'm going to intentionally choose what I allow into my life when she does this it changes what you attract and suddenly a snake doesn't see you as a potential meal a guy doesn't see you as a potential doormat simply because you have that energy out there to go I'm only going to allow certain things I'm not going to allow everything she's putting the energy out there but if she remembers that sentence it doesn't matter what I attract it only matters what I allow then what she attracts will change it's a bit of a it's a funny setup that is so true Uh, you know why because I was that girl I was the girl that would allow things and you know from a female's perspective upon reflection there's a few reasons why I did that first of all being a people pleaser and feeling like in order for somebody to want me or to love me I needed to make them first happy and so if I stood up for myself that made them uncomfortable, then how would that make them feel, right? I had terrible, terrible relationships where they were not great guys, right? And I realized that they sniffed that out. They could smell that on me from a mile away. And it came down to me reflecting and then also becoming super firm with my boundaries and realizing just as if I 
allowed somebody into my life. I even had a friendship. So let's talk about like platonic relationships. You set boundaries with people in your life, right? And then the people that love you and respect you respect those boundaries. And those that don't respect those boundaries really don't deserve a place in your life. So in fact, through creating those boundaries and most times not allowing people to cross them, you kind of get rid of the ones that don't respect that. Therefore, they don't respect you. Therefore, they're not going to be a good partner. And you're left with the ones that do respect that the fact that you have boundaries and will absolutely respect what you want and what you don't want in your life. It's kind of a great way of weeding them out. 100%. The thing with boundaries, some people you meet, when you give a boundary, they will see it as controlling. Other people will see, oh yeah, 100%, common sense. And that's based on compatibility. So your boundary might be, hey, don't go out to a nightclub without me in the middle of the night. Perfectly reasonable boundary. Some people would see that as controlling. That just means you have a lack of compatibility. So find people who you can easily set boundaries with, who have good, good compatibility, who naturally have the same boundaries anyway. And that's that good compatibility with your ideal partner, which makes everything really easy.